<clears throat> well, that's a long spin today. And it's a bull. I'll give it that, considering what happened last night. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar. We're commercial rare coins and precious metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. I am still stoked about this live video cam every day. Oh, boy. I went fishing yesterday, too. Caught myself a couple dolphin. Lost one at the boat. Uh, however, took a nice one in and going to make myself some mahi sandwiches today. And uh, let's move along to, whoa, I hope nobody was watching last night because you probably didn't sleep well. But let me preface my whole show with this right now, especially for new viewers and a lot of you viewers that have been, or listeners, I should say, that have been listening to me for quite some time now. <clears throat> Understand that I've posted this uh, meme up here many times, or quote, I should say, not a meme. Uh, and this is done by Robert Heinlein. And uh, again, I want you all to remember this. And uh, especially you new folks that are into precious metals and you folks that tend to get a little bit uh, uh, skittish here. Uh, and it says, of course the game is rigged. Don't let that stop you. If you don't play, you can't win. So I want you to keep that in mind that this whole time when I'm talking about what I'm going to talk about here. And uh, whenever you see uh, what happened, happening. Uh, just uh, relax. Uh, uh, don't let it stop you. Just learn how the game is rigged and uh, you'll become a better player. Let's look at markets overnight. For some of you probably looking last night, your, 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 your jaw probably fell open, but uh, we'll talk about that and exactly what happened. I'm going to explain to you <clears throat> really simply what happened and then we'll go into the details of what happened last night. But let's take a look at overnight markets. Look at that. I looked at that at the opening. I got last night. I, I got done with dinner. I said, "Hey, let me go see what the markets are doing." And I looked, and my jaw dropped. I said, "Holy smokes!" I mean, <laughs> sixteen eighty nine ninety six, folks, uh, is what I saw at the opening in thinly in a thinly traded market. That again, I've talked about this how many times? Uh, when do markets get monkey hammered? Fridays and Mondays. When usually when during thinly traded hours. Usually when during holidays. Uh, and usually when after economic news like you had on Friday, uh, you know, with the better job report, which was bullshit because it ended up being all teachers and uh, 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 restaurant workers anyway, which are all going back to work, just a dead cat bounce actually, but uh, no less. Uh, these are the times I, I picked it out even last Thursday. I told you it's going to probably get hit on uh, Friday and it's probably going to get, I had a good feeling and it's going to get maybe hit on Monday. I thought they ran out of ammunition on, on Friday, but as I've always said, never underestimate the bankers. They can print endless money. They can borrow endless money. Uh, so can these uh, financial institutions that uh, do these trades. Uh, but before I tell you who, what, when, and, and how. Uh, let's just take a look at prices again. Overnight markets at 1689. It took silver down 2270. Didn't expect to see that. Uh, current, uh, let's see, the high was 2439. That was actually the open. The high on gold was 1765. But take a look at that $100 hit. And gold is still sitting at 1746 right now. Silver is still sitting above that 24. But look at that overnight market, 22. Platinum. <clears throat> let's talk about platinum for a second. Platinum oddly went down all on its own last week. It's almost as if the people in the platinum pool or the, or the, or the platinum mobsters, uh, mafia, the platinum, let's call them the platinum mafia because that's what it is, South Africans, Russians, and Canadians uh, who control that entire market. Uh, so the, uh, the platinum mafia uh, 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 had seen their prices lower uh, last week, and I was wondering why is platinum sub-$1,000 when gold and silver kind of like hanging in there? Uh, now we can kind of see platinum was maybe a tell potentially. Uh, no less, platinum didn't do much of anything. Even the overnight markets, nine sixty. It did a little bit. Nine sixty four, uh, nine eighty three. Currently sitting at nine eighty. Great freaking buy, by the way, in my opinion. Uh, silver uh, again. Look at that twenty two seventy. Uh, low twenty four thirty nine was a high. We're currently sitting at uh, twenty four oh two. Just a tad above twenty four. Great buying opportunity, folks. Same thing with gold. Um, Gold just recovered pretty fast. I mean, there's some crazy stuff going on out there. And let me kind of point out and, and preface. Again, if you're new to this industry, don't worry about this. Every game is rigged out there. Your life is rigged from the day you were born. You know, I know most of us don't want to admit that, but the narrative is read to us. We swallow it, we eat it, we live it. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the game is rigged everywhere around you, whether it's uh, stock markets, bond markets, uh, uh, elections or uh, uh, gold and silver markets. I mean, the games are rigged. I mean, <laughs> but you know what? 
one of the points of this entire show that I do is to explain to you, yes, it is rigged. It, you know, it's, there's not much we can do about it as individuals except you know, keep talking, keep telling people the game is rigged, keep explaining to new people, uh, and don't listen to corporate media. So uh, that's one of the big things. I wonder how corporate media is going to spend last night's uh, flash crash. It's kind of interesting. Uh, but I want you all to remember, don't, uh, we, we know how the game is rigged. Uh, that's why you watch my videos. That's why we read GATA.org all the time. Uh, because uh, if you want to win in a rigged casino, and all casinos are rigged. They really are. They're all rigged in their favor, if you think about it. Uh, and they can change your rules at any time. Uh, so, <clears throat> and that's the, that's the real kicker right there. Oh, yeah, we can, you know, if, if you start winning big, they'll just throw your ass out of there or change the rules on you. Uh, but no less, they only let the whales and themselves win. And, of course, the game is rigged. Don't let it stop you. Trust me on this, folks. And let's move along here to uh, what I'm going to explain, the players. Who are the players and, and what happened last night? Well, let's start with some definitions here. Uh, first, fraudulent. Uh, marked by, based on, or done by the use of dishonest methods to acquire something of value. All right, I know you're probably thinking, why, why is Brian giving me definitions on this stuff? And I think some of you know where we're going here. Uh, but I'm going to tell you who the players are and what happened, more or less, in a real simple lesson. So we've got fraud, use of dishonest methods to acquire something of value. Uh, that's definitely going on. We've got financial institutions. Uh, and we've got people like uh, this, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, and, and uh, regulators are supposed to uh, uh, take care of that. And what is a financial institution? Because here are the players here. First, I'm going to show you what's kind of happening, and now I'm going to show you who the players are. Uh, financial institutions. Financial institution includes any person doing business in one of the more fallen capacities. We're going to look at these uh, primarily. Uh, bank and uh, broker or dealers in securities. That's who we're kind of talking about. So... Uh, uh, let's go on to our next definition here, which is inept. And uh, why am I going to talk about inept? And let's see what the definition of inept is. Generally incompetent, bungling, lackness, and fitness. We won't say that. Uh, let's say generally incompetent and bungling. That's probably a, a first, uh, that's, that's a good definition of inept. And why am I going into inept? Because the definition of inept is government. Is There's no doubt in my line, mind. And again, I'm explaining who, how, and why here in real simple terms. Government. Uh, and what is government? A body of persons that constitutes government authority of a po political unit or an organization. And uh, let's look at another word that I like too. Worthless. Uh, definition of worthless. Lacking worth. Valueless. Uh, useless. I like that even. Useless. Let's use the word useless. Because why am I word using the word useless? Because I'm going to go into regulators. And we can look at useless as government and regulators as well. Uh, government regulators means any federal or state government authority charged with the supervision or regulation of depository institutions. So what happened last night with last night's flash, uh, crash, uh, flash crash? We've got fraud by financial institutions. Uh, here's a, and, and we've got lack of enforcement by these people, uh, financial crime networks, and we've got ineptness by regulators that are supposed to be taking care of this, and we've got ineptness by government. I think I pretty much covered all, all of them. And let's just say they've all been pretty much worthless on this. I mean, <clears throat> if a little small country coin dealer, <laughs> uh, maybe not a country coin, but if a little small dealer like me, uh, it, it, it's so obvious uh, and it's written about so frequently, yet the regulators and government does nothing. What does that do for us? It, it tells us that they are basically worthless. And the only thing they are good for is uh, maybe taking care of their buddies that are doing the manipulation. Uh, or maybe going to work for them when they get out of their government job, one or the other. Uh, so basically I've covered a few good definitions that we all know. Fraudulent, financial institutions, inept. Oh, where'd my inept go? Oh, it's using up some memory here. Inept government. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, I'm losing all my pages here. And worthless. <laughs> oh, Miriam doesn't want to pop up on me, but there we go. Definitions. Government, worthless governments, inept governments, and, and worthless uh, uh, regulators. So, sorry about that. My pages are acting up a little bit. I think I got too many pages open. Sucking up some memory on me. Uh, so, kind of let's move out of here. I'm going to close these pages because we already know what the definitions are. Uh, you knew them before I even read them, but I just kind of want to, uh, uh, you know, bring my point home here. What's going on and why? Mostly why the inept and the and the stupidity and the uh, uh, the issues we've got going on with lack of regulators doing their job and the lack of government properly looking at this. Um, it just 
I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, that's things that you can actually call and complain to these people about as well. Uh, and I do. Trust me. I've called the uh, regulators before, and I've left nasty messages saying, how can you idiots uh, not see this and stuff? But let's take a look at uh, what's happened overnight here. Gold flash crashes by almost $100. And, and again, this is something I've talked about so frequently. I mean, if a guy, small guy like me knows this, and I didn't learn all this on my own, guys like Ted Butler and GATA.org pointed this out long ago, opened my eyes to exactly what's happening, how worthless uh, uh, regulators uh, and how uh, banks, fraudulent banks, are probably working for uh, the BIS and probably working for the bigger financial institutions. And let's go over what uh, uh, ZH says about this right here. And this is kind of interesting. Uh, gold flash crashes by almost $100. That's $4 billion in sell orders hit. And who sells $4 billion worth of gold in the middle of at the beginning of it, uh, uh, the trading session, Sunday, in the middle of the night, um, or while it was daytime somewhere, but in thinly traded markets that nobody would trade, and certainly nobody would sell that much gold at one time just to lower the market, they cut their own throats. That last night, what we saw, again, on a bigger, more epic scale, it's more in your face now, folks, too, as well. That's the sucky part. It's, it's, it's almost like they're taunting us now, and they're, they're sticking it right in our faces. Uh, but you know what? We're, they're going to be the ones that get the big fuck you, ultimately, uh, because, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, anyways, I don't know exactly why, but... <laughs> Uh, we, we know we know the game is rigged, folks, and we know how to win, and we know how we're going to play this. We're going to buy every one of their fucking dips, and uh, we're going to stick it up their ass at some point. And speaking of, uh, I, t I said a little bit ago, uh, one of the things that I recommend you all do is go to the uh, financial, uh, financial crimes unit. Go to all the regulators you can find online. Give them calls and uh, let them know that this kind of stuff is happening, and uh, let them know how unpleased you are. And don't don't be afraid to throw an f bomb in there. You know, in these times, I think f bomb are needed. So uh, let me read this article. In the liquidity void that follows the resumption of future trading, which saw U.S. futures trade modestly lower, uh, there wasn't, again, nothing happening last night in any other market. A sudden burst of selling in gold futures contracts sent gold plunging as low as 1677 or almost $100 lower from Friday's close. Again, thinly traded market, uh, $4 billion worth of gold out of nowhere for no particular reason other than what just to slam gold. Uh, there was no, and, and here he, they pointed out in ZH here pretty good, there was no offsetting move in any securities after the futures reopened. Uh, the 10-year traded back over 1.3, but the move was orderly, went over $4 billion notional or some 24,000 contracts were suddenly and furiously dumped in a completely priced indiscriminate manner whose apparent intention was to nuke the entire bid stack. So. What is this? What is this really? Who did this? Now, I was telling you about why it is allowed to happen. It's because of inept regulators and our inept government, or corrupt, or whatever you want to call it, um, allowing corrupt bankers and corrupt financial institutions to do this, maybe at the higher level. And, and again, we're going to get into that, too, who might have done this. Uh, but again, it's so in your face, it's not even funny now, folks. We're suddenly and furiously dumped in a complete price indiscriminate, me, which overnight, again, nobody sells those kind of number of contracts and that unless their pure intent was to drive the prices down. That's fraud, folks. That's fraudulent. No matter how you look at it, that's manipulation and fraud. People like that need to go to jail. But the problem is, like I said, uh, too big to fail, too big to jail. Uh, but let's move along here. Why there was no news or even pair traded correlation cat catalyst mood. Technicians have noted a death cross alongside a technical breach of 1750, uh, which triggered liquidation stops to the downside. So uh, for now, gold appears to have stabilized around 1700. I suspect this was written early this morning or last night because now we're currently sitting around 1740 uh, back up. But, uh, you know, it's tough to say what's going to happen here Monday morning. Uh, are we going to see some more monkey hammering going on? It's very possible. Uh, Gata, G-A-T-A dot org explains what happened last night. As they don't really explain it. They, uh, they know what happened. We know what happened. We know how it happens. And last night was a perfect example. Uh, again, who would you take all the gold you own and sell it into the, in, in a market that you would just completely destroy and cause it to go down and, 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 and indeed cause your own investment to just uh, uh, drop $100? No. No person in their right mind would do that. Again, unless their objective was to drive the prices down. Period. That's it. Pure, simple, 
manipulation in our faces. Uh, how will financial journalism and market analysts rationalize tonight's gold smash? Let's take a read on this. And it's a good point as well, because uh, the media and, again, regulators uh, and our government is inept and stupid, uh, inept or in bed with these people. Um, and uh, uh, the, the media is uh, either inept and or uh, in bed with these people as well. I don't think the media is in bed with them. I just think the media is basically inept. They just uh, talk about what they're told to talk about uh, by the people that own them, the big corporations that own them. Uh, so let's read this. How will financial news organizations, gold and silver market analysts, explain tonight's smashing of monetary metals, prices, and futures markets? Of course, it hardly matters how they will explain it, since nearly all gold and silver market analysis is merely clumsy rationalization. A decline in the metals can be attributed to most anything. Speculation that the Federal Reserve may raise interest rates by a tenth of percent, uh, that the U.S. economy is strengthening, that... now. Th what they're talking about right here is all the reasons that the media can come up with their makeup or, or have their so-called experts tell them why gold flash crashed on Sunday night. These are the excuses that they will use, and God is clearly pointing this out. Uh, you know, speculation of the Fed may raise rates. We know what bullshit that is, but we know what an effect that has on the price of gold, too. Uh, that it, what When they're smashing it, when they're purposely smashing it. Uh, U.S. economy is strengthening. <laughs> bullshit. Uh, that un unemployment is up. Bullshit. Uh, it's a dead cat bounce. Or down. That sentiment is increasing. That inflation is transitory as if the dollar hasn't lost most of its value since the Fed was created in 1913. Uh, let's move along here. What, what has yet to be offered by mainstream financial news organization and market analysis is an explanation for gold's sharp declines is central bank intervention. Here is the player that we've been talking about. Here is the uh, the bad guy, folks. Here is the um, um, Here are the people that... that are truly too big to fail and too big to jail. Central banks. And uh, when you have these guys manipulating the markets and nobody's saying anything, it's pretty sad. In the market, though, though um, in the market, though, every month, GATA's dogged consultant Robert Lindborn documents the intervention via the monthly statements of accounts discreetly posted by the gold broker for the major central banks, the Bank of International Settlements, BIZ, as he did again just the other day. Mainstream financial journalism and market analysts have not have yet to try and ascertain exactly who has been doing the sort of not-for-profit selling that was unleashed tonight. Zero Hedge, as we just read, quickly estimated that some entity dumped about four billion dollars in paper gold in liquid conditions as soon as the market opened, and uh, the dumping was assuredly not done by thousands of retail investors who decided in unison this week that the uh, world's money supply having doubled in the last year or so and real interest rates going negative by several. Uh, uh, that, that, again, folks, this is not retail people. This is not people selling real gold, silver bars. This is not people running into their bullion dealers selling their metals. In fact, it's the opposite. Um, we, have, you know, we haven't seen any capitulation whatsoever, none, zero, zip, um, uh, by retail customers. This is pure and simple uh, monkey hammering by major entities. And uh, as they point out in G, and this is why I always tell you, you need to be reading GATA.org. Um, you know, the game is rigged, and you can win the game if you know who the players are and how they play it. And what are we going to do? We are going to buy their dips because they're anticipating major, you know, they're anticipating people selling the dips, frightening people into selling their, their gold and silver. That's exactly the intent of what they do like they did last night. Uh, knocking markets four billion dollars in illiquid conditions, and uh, uh, so let's point to something else here. Uh, I don't want to keep repeating myself. So who has four billion in cash or credit to dispose this way? That's a good point. Now my my thinking was well, you know, maybe it was just one of the big short players, you know, uh, the shorts out there playing around like uh, you know Goldman or Merrill Lynch. And again, remember Goldman got fined nine hundred eighty-seven billion dollars for spoofing the market. Uh, and that's what happened last night. It got spoofed. But again, it, w it wasn't Goldman. It probably wasn't the short, uh, the shorts in the market. Uh, Merrill Lynch got busted uh, big time, uh, but they threw the traders under the bus, not the CEOs. Again, too big to jail. To, I mean, too big to fail, too big to jail. Um, so who has $4 billion in their cash or credit to dispose of? This is why I love God at GATA.org. Actual journalism might begin with a phone call to Biz and Basil. 
uh, and the New York Fed's trading desk and following the refusals to answer any critical questions. Continue with the phone call to the major gold and silver mining companies and when the World Gold Council to ask if their suspicions finally had been aroused. Uh, so basically what they're saying is that uh, uh, a good journalist, uh, corporate media, if, if they had any good journalist or they were able to do it, would call up the Fed's trading desk and would call up Biz and Basil and, and ask them uh, uh, what happened and how this happened overnight and why they refused to answer questions about gold and why they... Uh, so these are the people that are doing it on this scale right here, folks. And remember what we've talked about plenty, plenty of times in the past, that gold is a canary in the coal mine. The Fed's always, uh, central banks have always feared the price of gold going up too high. They are using all the ammo they can to knock this down. But again, uh, I think more and more people are discovering exactly how this game is rigged, and more and more people are taking advantage of the Fed knocking this price down by buying physical gold and silver the retail people are we're, we're not again we're not seeing any retail people capitulating anymore maybe institutional investors that are into paper derivatives and F e F ETFs and that, that kind of bullshit maybe they're capitulating but physical retail buyers are not capitulating period if, if anyone tells you otherwise they're full of shit um, let's move along here and uh, where else am I going Oh, lost my thought there. And let's see here. Continuing phone calls. World Gold Council uh, to ask if their suspicions have been aroused. And uh, and what that means is GATA.org. The World Gold Council is this group that's supposed to take care of miners and, and supposed to promote uh, uh, the use of gold and promote people buying gold. It's basically the... Uh, the marketing arm of the gold market in general. However, they've never got it. Is 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 constantly asked the World Gold Council to 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 look into it, to ask about it. But they do nothing. They do nothing. Uh, and the mining companies who should have really vested interest in not having their markets monkey hammered, they say nothing. They're silent. Uh, and I and, and a lot of people can't figure out why they're silent. Maybe they're just afraid of. Uh, um, of government regulation or, or having their loans. I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, but my, the mining companies should be more interested in it. But if you look at mining companies, you got to realize none of them are political. None of them are really geniuses when it comes to this kind of stuff. They're miners. You know, they're engineers and miners. So maybe it makes sense that they uh, uh, wouldn't react to this and that they would believe whatever they're told um, by the officials. But what I'm telling you, folks, the officials, government regulators, uh, governments themselves, Financial institutions, corporate media, you can't trust them. Don't listen to them, especially when it comes to gold. And uh, let's move along here. Actual journalism might be continue. Uh, a good article to read. I really think you should read this here, folks. And let me point out this article here. It's on GATA.org. Uh, How will financial journalism and market analysts rationalize tonight's gold smash? Uh, read the rest of yourself. Uh, I, I would recommend it. I think you could. Where is it? You can probably click these uh, little links here to see exactly what they're talking about. For some of you new folks, when I was talking about some of this stuff, it might have gone over your heads. Uh, but again, uh, you can click these links. It'll explain uh, some of the things that uh, I was just uh, mentioning and uh, reading off their article here. Oh, let's see here. Let's move down here. Uh, but financial journalism is not the only culprit here. Gold and silver investors themselves are culprits, too, insofar as they have not pushed the mining companies. Okay, here you go. Uh, which they are invested to pursue the market manipulation issue. Uh, again, uh, my my thoughts have always been is the mining industry is loaded with miners and engineers. They are not uh, people that really follow politics or follow these markets per se. Uh, with few precious uh, exceptions, the industry is notably mainly for its <laughs> the industry is notable mainly for its cowardice and for for mining its investors more than the metals themselves. Ooh, that's a pretty hard-hitting uh, comment there. Uh, yes, such complaints from GATA.org are getting old, as Lee Strasberg, Heim Roth reminds Al Pacino, Michael Corleone, and The Godfather Part Two. This is the business we've chosen. Or how does he say? This is the business we've chosen. <laughs> as rotten as it may be. Um, but we're not shaken out, and GAT and GAT points that out uh, pretty clearly. Like. And, and the thing that I can stress over and over, of course it's rigged, folks, but if you don't play, you can't win. We know who the players are. We know how they're rigging it. Last night was just a great freaking example of that. And, uh, um, well, that's really about it. I think I beat this horse up pretty good here. Uh, ZH had a, an article I want to take a look at real quick because I kind of found it. A couple comments I wanted to make here. Gold melts down. I don't like title. Well, 
I don't know. That's uh, you know, I, I can be accused of writing title. Gold does. Gold did kind of melt down last night, but uh, I don't like negative titles when it comes to the industry. Uh, gold melts down again. Sometimes an anecdote, and I'm glad they put anecdote here because that's exactly what this is. Effective as a chart in making a point. Here we'll offer both. Let's start with our anecdote. Our fellow ZH contributing author Tim Knight, host of Slope Hope blog. I think the guy's an idiot frankly, goes to his local bullion dealer to sell some gold coins. The dealer won't buy all of Tim's coins because he's almost out of cash from all the people who wanted out of precious metals. What an idiot, Tim. You're an idiot. Uh, that's your anecdote that your local dealer, how much did he spend? Six figures, 100000 50000 he was out of money. That's your anecdote that gold's, uh, uh, really, I mean, I'm going to just call this guy out. This guy, Tim Knight, in my opinion, is a freaking idiot. I went to my local boy and dealer to get rid of some of these gold coins. I couldn't buy them all since they were out. What'd you go to? Podunk? No one? Um, I mean, I'm not making fun of small local dealers, but what an idiot comment that is. Really. This guy, idiot, in my opinion. Sorry about that. <laughs> just, I don't know why that comment just got me, but uh, uh, I, I moved down here and I read another comment that, that he gives down here. Gold kicks off week with this tradition of being complete and uh, absolute garbage. Well, sir, I can tell you, Mr. Slope of Hope, and what is your name? I've forgotten it already since it's so unimportant, actually. Uh, Tim Knight, Slope of Hope. Uh, you have no fucking clue what you're talking about, so why don't you stick to what you know? And uh, qu quite frankly, I don't know what that is, but it's obviously not, nothing to do with gold and silver. Uh, so that's my comment to you, sir. And uh, as far as charts go and uh, this particular uh, uh, portfolio armor, you know, these are paper traders, and if you follow this guy, you know, if you follow a uh, portfolio armor uh, uh, strategy here, all you're doing is you're buying paper derivatives, ETFs. You're not buying gold, folks, and you're becoming a day trader, and chances are you're, you're going to lose money listening to people like this guy right here, uh, armor portfolio. Again, if you understand that market and you are a day trader, great, get into it. But if you're not a C, you know, if you're not an experienced day trader, don't listen to people like this, and certainly do not listen to this guy, Slope of Hope. What an idiot. Sorry about that. Had to say it. Oh, I even got his uh, page there, Slope of Hope. Uh, anyway, so let's move along here, and where am I going? And there we go. Uh, I said all I need to say about this. So, so what does this really mean to... Uh, us players that understand uh, who the manipulators are and how they're rigging this game, this means buy the frickin' dip. Uh, boy, I wish I could have bought some physical last night when it was down 100 bucks. My God, I would have made a big trade last night and made a fortune. Uh, however, again, there's no trading physical on Sunday night, really, not in the United States. So kind of screwed in that area. No less. Let's kind of see what the market's doing right now since I've been talking. Is it up a little bit? Is it down a little bit? And 23.91. They kicked it down a little bit. 17.44. Let's see what happens this week. Again, great opportunity to do what, folks? Oh, support your local business. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a great opportunity to buy the freaking dip. Well, again, let me move out of this. Move to uh, the video on. Let's see, my video on Friday was uh, uh, jaw boned again. We we saw monkey hammered prices uh, Friday again. Happened uh, th late Thursday night. Uh, before we woke up Friday morning, same thing happened. It happened a bigger way last night, obviously. Uh, and uh, not too much to talk about. I think uh, uh, Lucas says your microtrend chart was really helpful. For me, the gold prices versus silver price historical chart is probably the most helpful one as it shows the two metals at the same time. I was impressed to see the outstanding jump of silver that took place from January to September 2011, which has only happened once again in 1979-81 and 81. Do you happen to know what the reason it caused silver to keep shooting up even after gold stopped rising? And was it the same reason that caused the independent rise of silver of these two historic uh, uh, unique occasions? Um, you know, I, I can't go into detail on that, Luca, but what I can tell you is that uh, um, there are similar uh, uh, similar things between the 1980 markets and the 2011-2012 uh, market um, that... Uh, uh, you know, it all has to do with declining, uh, pow you know, declining bu buying power of the dollar, uh, you know, the decline of the fiat currencies, and uh, uh, people buying gold as a hedge and buying silver as a hedge. We're seeing, we're, we're getting more and more into uncertain times. The economy is getting worse and worse. They've not fixed anything. It just keeps getting worse. This is why you're seeing gold and silver go up. Now, what exasperated the silver prices in 1979 and 80 was the Hunt Brothers. We talked about that the other day. The Hunt Brothers, imagine that like right now, 
the Hunt brothers were still around. I think they're dead. And uh, it, it almost could be a repeat. They could almost repeat this again if the comics hadn't changed the rules. But what, what they would do is the Hunt brothers right now would go out and they would buy uh, all the physical silver they could above ground. And it would have been an ideal situation to do it in 2011. Maybe this is what happened. A Hunt brother type situation is why we saw that, that, that further jump. But uh, you go out and you buy all, especially after 2020 when all the mines were closed and everything was closed, preceding that and during that you buy all the physical that you could possibly can. You buy, you buy whatever physical is available as much as you possibly can. Then you go in and you buy as many contracts you can with London and Comex and you ask for delivery. Uh, if 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 uh, if that happened again, gold would I mean silver would probably be a hundred dollars per ounce or a hundred fifty two hundred dollars per ounce if we had another Hunt brother situation today. Uh, but what we're seeing is we're just seeing uh, silver kind kind of reacting to uh, uh, where it needs to be. It's been so cheap for so long, and uh, uh, I think that's why you're, you you saw the up in 2011 2012. It followed the price of gold more or less in 11 and 12. Uh, the reason silver was much more crazy again in in 1980 was because of the Hunt brothers. Uh, I don't think we have any Hunt Brothers out there right now, and if we did, they're being very quiet and secretive, uh, and uh, they're not being noticed. Uh, let me move along here. Super Genius. Uh, yeah, yeah, good uh, dip buying opportunities. And that's really about it. I, I, I want to thank all you folks here for watching and commenting here. And uh, I'm going to move along to what the best deal of the day is. And it's the same thing it was Friday in the last week or so. If you can pick up bars for a spot plus 80 or under, you're doing pretty good. Uh, Maples and KRs are currently trading under $100 premium right now. Those are a better deal. Um, the Eagles, if they're available, I haven't checked the new spreadsheets today. I'm assuming that they're going to be the same as Friday. Uh, but Eagles should be around buck twenty-five or less on a premium. Uh, as far as silver bars go, um, um, I was pretty surprised that uh, I think 100 ounce bars are around three uh, three bucks over right now. That's a pretty darn good price. Uh, 90 percent is a little bit more. I think uh, 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 silver one ounce and 10 ounce bars are around uh, three dollars and 75 cents per ounce. So they've come down quite a bit. Uh, that's what I would consider the best deal. Silver Eagles are still overpriced, in my opinion, folks. Uh, they're still probably bringing that seven to ten dollar premium. Wouldn't pay it. Uh, there's much better deals than that, just my opinion again. And as I said, always support local businesses. I advertise to be Atmex SD and JM Bullion. I can beat their prices. They seem to be good online companies, so I'm not saying anything bad about them. I'm just being super competitive. Uh, and again, if you don't live in my area, uh, try to find a local dealer rather than buying online. Again, nothing bad with those online sellers. Um, it just keep that money local if you can and uh, uh, spend it locally. It stays in town. It's good when you do that. Uh, I highly recommend whether you're buying tires, jewelry, or uh, precious metals, uh, buy local if you can. And a lot of times local businesses can be just as competitive as the online guys, uh, especially the savvy guys. Well, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Appreciate you watching. And uh, if these metals keep dipping, buy the dips when you can. And uh, definitely don't consider selling. I don't think most of you are. And as I said earlier, I've not seen any capitulation. So I don't know what the fuck that guy was talking about, that, that he sold all his gold to his local dealer. And uh, Anyways, I don't know why <laughs> I keep going on about that. That's just stupid-ass comments. Well, that's it. Talk to you tomorrow. And... Uh, have a great day. Bye now.